just so heads up, doesn't he? He's like, that's it! I've come up with a new recipe, man! <laughs> Well, you need to speak to Sean Bean, because he didn't blow. <laughs> uh, so, obviously I did do the voice, you know, on the day I did four weeks motion capture, doing the voice every day, lots of direction doing the voice. I, I mean, they, they didn't really, they were very specific about how I delivered lines, but they weren't really bothered about what I sounded like, because they were going to replace me with Sean Bean. Um, but they were very specific about how I delivered the lines, in fact. 80% of, of the direction I got was about the delivery of the lines, not the physicality, which I take as meaning that I was getting the physicality of King Regis and the, the kind of the expressions, the, the, you know, the physical acting right fairly quickly, um, which was lovely. Uh, and they, and they, were, they were concentrating on getting, the, getting the, you know, the sensitivity of how he says his lines. He doesn't say that in the lines, so you want to make sure they're said correctly. And of course, a lot of his lines are quite uh, nuanced. And he's, you know, he's not giving much away, but giving stuff away. Um, I, I had fun with Arden, because obviously I had to do Arden's voice as well while I was doing Arden. And I did Arden's voice pretty much the way it sounds. I did, you know, very high, slightly foppish British voice. Uh, so it's quite interesting when I heard the final version, I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's the way I did Arden as well. Um, but I just kind of, you know, they gave me brief. There wasn't like a, a real kind of this is Arden. I mean, they, 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 they wanted the, the, the flamboyancy and that kind of restoration of foppishness. It just seemed obvious what he would sound like if he's, if he's doing all that flourishing and, you know, then he'd sound quite annoying. Um, but it just kind of, you know, just kind of happened. They were, they were quite happy with, with that. There wasn't, which is quite good. I wasn't taken to one side at any point and said, no, John, you, you know, you're way too, way too Manuel. And <laughs> Regis is Manuel. <laughs> And I didn't try anything crazy. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. You know, have the guts to do that. I kept it very basic. Um, yeah. Over to you. We we were given essentially the first and about the only bit of actual sort of accent direction we were given was basically uh, natives of insomnia are British and yes. versus American. That was basically our. <laughs> that was just it. Um, yeah. Now the thing we can't work out is why Noctis is American. <laughs> That's the one that we've all been wondering about. Um, and I've had like people from Square go, why is Noctis American? Look at me, I didn't do that. Um, but yeah, that was about the only thing we got. And then it was a lot of it was down to script. Um, the script, like for Limitus, the script was written with a slight sort of Brooklyn pattern to it. So that was just basically that first read through. They went, okay, do an accent you think fits. So I, I did that accent. They went, yeah, that'll do. Good, keep that, do that. I was like, oh, okay. That was it. There was nothing more to it. It was just, that was the first thing that came out. And they went, yeah, we like that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, with episode Ignis coming out, obviously, like, they released a trailer and stuff like that, so we kind of have, like, an idea of, like, some of the stuff they might touch on. I was just wondering, like, your views on, like, the relationship between Ignis and Noctis, because I know, like, the brotherhood we learned that, like, they kind of, like, grew up together, but there was still kind of that dissonance, because Ignis is still, like, technically an advisory, he's not a part of the family or anything like that. So I was just curious, like, how you felt about that, their relationship in regards to that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I think um, I think that's that's always uh, a rather wonderful. Like, studying Shakespeare in various sort of classics, as I'm sure a lot of us have, and um, you, that's always been one of the most fascinating things to me. Is not only the central sort of royal characters that obviously are fixated on uh, in, in these sort of classics, but but also their their confidants and the people closest to them. And I, I love those relationships anyway. In watching. Sort of films, and there's a beautiful, well, very strange film called Dune, uh, directed by David Lynch. And there's a lot of those types of characters around the, the central character. I always find them so interesting because it is is that rather marvelous sort of tension between having to school someone and to be their friend, but to a point, and and the point is reached on both sides. Uh, you know, you, you you can't be too rude to the royal family. Uh, but sometimes you might have to, and, and, and the other way around too. I mean, I, I, I've always felt Iggy to be 
older and sort of wiser, maybe a little bit more. He's he's, a, he's the mentor figure. But but having having been that way since since very young, um, the relationship is 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 deep and complex. So so where who who bears the power at any time, and, and that, that's always quite an interesting thing to me. But I think he sort of wears it. He just wears it quite lightly until. Not is about to do something really dumb, um, <laughs> and then sort of has to slightly school him and, and demand him and be number one waifu. <laughs> <laughs> just, just him. Like, and, uh, so yeah, yeah, I, I, I've loved that whole dynamic, and, and I think in, in, the, in, the, in the DLC that you're about to see, you'll, you'll sort of really get that to the nth degree. You'll suddenly really see it, and um, it's something quite beautiful actually. Like where, where, how, the, the depth of that. And, and, and it's always sort of rather interesting in terms of British culture, and in fact any sort of hierarchical culture, how the, how the, 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 the how royalty is supported by a staff, and the staff is prepared to lay everything down for royals that don't always treat them excellently. Uh, which is not necessarily the case with English, but, but but that's an interesting dynamic to me, always, you know, what, what people are prepared to lay down, and they lay down the very deepest parts of themselves for people, for an idea, for an ideal, for a, for a focal point of, of, of society's sort of structure. And I, 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 so anyway, I, without saying too much more, like, you know, uh, I hope you enjoy that sort of richness in, in the new DLC. I think you, you, you might find it quite interesting, I know I do. I'm really excited for it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this question is for all three of you. Um, it's, it, it might be kind of different from Adam's point of view, but during King's Clave, what, what was the process like of doing the motion capture? Did, like, what was the schedule like? Did you have to like, go on diets or anything like that? <laughs> and Adam, did you need to condition your voice uh, for weakness or anything like that? Any information would be. <laughs> diets, we had those really terrible bacon burgers. <laughs> yeah. I was just saying, the you breakfast. Mean, <laughs> yeah, if you mean like going on a healthy diet, then God no. <laughs> uh, one of the one of the most things about being on sets is the catering. The catering's always deep. The problem is you always end up putting weight on on sets. On the upside, that motion capture is really slim because they just move the dots later. <laughs> so, in my case, how to? Oh, I, yes. yes. Um, uh, yeah, no, diet-wise, there was no, there was, there was no diet. But in terms of, of just the practicality of motion capture, I, I've never done it before. It was your, it was your first time. Yeah. So, you know, so a bit of a, a baptism of fire. And the, and the, the audition process, you know, often, ideally, an audition process is to find out whether you have the skills that the job needs. You know, like, you know, so, and, but with this, you know, they didn't test our motion capture skills at the audition. They just assumed we'd be able to do it. Well, so to be fair, to be honest, with motion capture, you can, well, as you've seen with certain characters like Nick's, um, frankly, if you couldn't have acted, they'd have just gone, all right, that's fine, we'll just have your face. Um, <laughs> so there are, there's a whole bunch of, all the, so most of the glaives were played by about four of us, playing all the different glaives with various different people's faces. Um, so in some ways, they didn't need to test our skills because they knew that there's an army of mocap actors out there who they can get in. Um, and then you can play multiple roles, so in that way, they could take the chance of us not working out. Um, in a way, I suppose it's part of the whole, you know, motion capture is still a, a new, burgeoning art form. Uh, I read something recently with Andy Serkis kind of, you know, really, you know, very strongly saying, you know, it needs to be recognised as what it is, actors performing. It's just because there's a layer of computer generated imagery on top of that, you're still what you're seeing is the performance of an actor. And if you liked that character's performance, then you know credit should go to the actor. And I think that's something that the world is, is catching up with. Obviously we're ahead of it in the you, in, in the you game industry. Definitely can tell it as well. Um, how many of you have played Horizon Zero Dawn? So uh, there's about three or four actors from Kingsley playing characters in Horizon. So Aloy is actually played by the same girl who played Luna in King's Clive. It's the same, same character. Um, and then the guy, Will, who played uh, Pelma, uh, he did all the motion, did all the performance of Pelma, is um, 
Is it Royce? Is it Royce? At the start, her uh, mentor figure. And when I played that game, I watched it, and it doesn't look anything like it at all, but I watched it, I knew he'd done some stuff in it, and I looked, I was like, that's definitely Will. You can tell from how it, the character moves, face expressions, you can spot it. And that, that really speaks to, you know, the nuance that is captured when you use actors to do motion capture to create a, a game character or, you know, or a film character that, that you can, you can recognise an actor, even though it's a different face and a different game and a character, that it captures that amount of nuance, which is why it works so well, I think. Um, I mean, the, 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 on that first day, I mean, my, my very first day, you know, I, I was over the moon. I like technology, so and I like acting, and you know, mocap is those two things in space in the same space. Um, you know, it's like acting for NASA. Um, <laughs> and so you got back to you know, telemetry flying through the air. There's a bank of computers over there and guys doing stuff. Um, but then suddenly realizing, oh, it's just theatre actually, from a, from a purely from an acting perspective, thinking that it was filmed was, was, was detrimental because there's no cameras, there's no camera angles, there's no lighting, there's no setups. It, it, from an acting practical point of view, you, it's just a bunch of actors in a big space, like actors on the stage. That was the kind of huge lesson I learned within the first hour. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it, it is a wonderful medium. I've got actually John moment I get back to LA where I'm um, doing some mocap and I will have to play two characters having a conversation <laughs> so <laughs> I better uh, think about that <laughs> you need but, that's how weird it gets you know you'll, you'll spend half the day doing the one side and then a completely different character this side and they're having a big old conversation about them and they'll just layer on the skins afterwards and become two different characters it's, it's rather remarkable to think about that. I've done, as I'm sure you guys have done as well, but no cap is so different. You're, you know, like, you know, I had to take a face, you take an element of it. I've done ones where I've just been the body for, for Daniel Craig, for, for James Bond, and then they've used his face and his voice. <laughs> or I've just done the voice, like for English, or I've been, you, you know, so it's, it's elements they can pick and choose. And the other thing to remember is that they don't necessarily set up cameras to, to sort of punch in on you or whatever, but the volume is full of cameras and it's an entry, so at the end of the day, they can just decide what angle they yeah. want to use on you yeah. after the fact. So they can sort of loop around you in a computer and underneath you and above you, like wherever they want to set the frame, finally, they do it way later, because everything is being recorded. Which, uh, as an actor, that's, that's weird, because you know, normally as an actor, you know exactly where the camera is, so you know... And how to play for it, so you know how it's going to be edited together because you know they shot me from here and then they shot me over there. Um, and there was a, there was only a couple of times in when I was when I was being Arden actually, and when Arden enters and you know walks up to meet the king, who he's not going to meet, so he then get advice on the two characters. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we we you know you, you're going to be face to face, aren't you? I was three hundred feet away from King Regis. Um, but there was one, only one moment when I said to them, like, "Do you know how your what camera angle you're going to pull out of this information?" And they kind of did. They said, "You know, yeah, yeah, we're most likely going to be sort of as, as Arden turns around." I think it's when I do the two finger thing. Uh, they kind of already knew that they were more than likely going to use a certain camera angle, uh, which just in that one scene I felt I needed to know. Like, it didn't really bother me the rest of the time. In that one scene, I was thinking. This was traditional film. I'd know where the shot was going to be, and I'd know where to play that to. Um, in relationship to where King Regis was, so there's Cameron and King Regis and me. And they kind of knew, and in the final cut, that's exactly what they did. But you're right, there is no, they can decide later, they can have any camera angle they want, because yeah, they're just capturing, they're capturing the movements of thousands of little dots. Bizarre. Yeah. Bizarre. Yeah, so no physical trait. I mean, be healthy, make sure you're all warmed up, and all that type of stuff. Or, or because it's, it's physical, it's theatre, as, as you said, and it's running and jumping and all the things that you, you know, there's all that physicality. And then warm up the voice, and any of uh, your drama school voice warm-ups, if you went to drama school, those all count. Um, one thing that I learned about in, in voice acting, which is really very helpful, is, and you're not maybe aware of it as, a, as an actor at drama schools, uh, there's a lot of mouth noises that are associated with speaking very close to a microphone. You can suddenly start to hear sort of like saliva and stuff in the mouth, and you can start to sound a bit weird. And, uh, and you, if you have a green apple ahead of doing voice, it gets rid of those mouth cracks, which is a very handy tip for any aspiring um, voice actor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.
So I got a question for all three of you. What would you say was the hardest character that you guys had to voice? I, I, uh, I play um, a, a dwarf called Torvin in uh, Shadow of Mordor, and, uh, and and there's times where where and I, I chose to give him a Scottish sort of brogue, but um, uh, there are times when when the American ear can't quite pick out what's being said if it's if it's done in its truest form, so it becomes a hybridised accent sometimes where you sort of have to really like hit an R that Americans can get. That, that isn't naturally there. So, so oftentimes accents uh, for, for the audience, or the largest audience, I suppose, that they're intended for, are, are hybridized by, by management. And you go, but that isn't the way it should sound, and they're like, well, hold on, we, we're gonna need it like that. So, so learning a hybridized accent like that is, is kind of tricky to do, because you're going against the way it naturally sort of sits in your body and in your mind. You're, you're trying to overlay a long piece of information, so that can be a bit tricky. So I found Torben a bit tricky. But uh, he's a dwarf of Middle Earth. I mean, they're not going to speak like Scottish, Scottish, are they? It's Middle Earth! Yeah. <laughs> uh, if I can be allowed to, oh, we haven't mentioned Sean Peen again. Uh, if I can be allowed to move away from Final Fantasy, anyone play Warhammer? Uh, so I did a, a voice, um, one of the orcs in one of the uh, War, Warhammer 40,000 Armageddon. Uh, there's a lovely orc called uh, Gaskell Fracker. Um, King of the Orcs, I think, so a bit of a theme going on there. <laughs> um, and, and of course, they, I mean, there was a lot of things that they have to have to lower the pitch, but, but that was a guttural, you know, a, a, a voice that would ruin your, ruin your voice if you're not careful. Um, so uh, that, that was quite hard. That was a, like a weird London accent as well, like a weird cockney accent. Brutal, thuggish. Yeah, just really rough. Why ain't there newbies? One of those. I know you're also like that in the East End, so I'm just like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's like 40 a day. And that was, you know, I could, I could literally do like three or four lines, and then I had to take a five minute break and drink some water, and then three or four lines, otherwise I'd have no voice. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it could be very exact. You're right, I forgot about that, the sheer physical, physicality of doing something yeah. deep and difficult like that. But also, in fact, it's like in the, in the booth, you know, doing crazy physicality, yeah. you know, especially if you've got, I mean, he was fighting the orc as an orc, so mainly fights, um, and fighting the, uh, the, the, the marines, isn't it? The uh, ultra marines, isn't it? Yeah, space marines, yeah. So, you know, you're, you're trying to get that, and you're, you're kind of, sometimes you, you kind of stop and you see the, 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 you know, the, the, the technician looking at you, because he's doing his job just like anyone in an office job, you know, a day job, doing that, and you're in the booth going, Where am you, Miss? <laughs> just trying to get some extra kind of, you can't, you can't do it without physically moving. So, yeah, I don't believe it. Yeah, luckily they don't always want us doing that. Because... <laughs> thank God. Yeah, thank God. Um, with me, I, my background was going theatre before going into, before actually doing Fun Fantasy. Um, so Fun Fantasy is the only real proper voiceover and stuff I've, that I've done. Um, but going back to theatre, I've had things where, there was one show in particular where we rehearsed for about, I think six weeks on and off, so a couple of days in, a couple of days out. And we got to the week before we opened, uh, I think it was the Tuesday we opened on the Friday, and the director went, yeah, your character's not, I'm not liking your character as much as I want to like your character. Can you do in Welsh? Oh. And up until that point, I was playing with Manson, so it very crisp, heightened RP the whole way through. But, you know Welsh? Uh, Welsh is so hard. I don't know if you know that. I ended up with this manservant with a limp. She also didn't give me a limp. <laughs> Three days before we opened. Um, can you give me a limp and make it Welsh? <laughs> so this is a whole character. And suddenly change into this Welshman. Just come on and go, all right, sir. Bizarre. We all know everybody loves everybody loves Olympic Welsh. Exactly. <laughs> it's also like a name of a really crap pub. Olympic <laughs> <laughs> <The> Welsh. <laughs> I drink them. <laughs> What's that? Thanks for your time. Good question. Thank you. Good question. Yeah. Time for okay. more quick one. Oh. Have you uh, exercised your area and rested your, your wrists? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 <
stuff. Did someone get that on camera? You said quick question? Quick? Okay, I guess if you were stuck on a deserted island, which Final Fantasy character would you be stuck with? <laughs> All three of you. Stuck with? Yeah. A blue girl for comfort. <laughs> <laughs>